This tutorial is all about doing acid-base titrations, uh, the techniques which are used and why particular indicators are better than others. You need to be able to explain why particular uh, indicators are used. These are uh, single indicators rather than mixed indicators like universal. So for single indicators we're talking about litmus which has two colours, red and blue, or phenolphthalein which has two colours, colourless or pink, um, rather than universal which has got a whole range of colours and it's difficult to see the end point. And then in terms of technique why you need to do several consistent tighter readings in titrations to be sure of the correct volume. Recapping then on technique, why do we do titrations? Well, they're a form of analysis. Sometimes we want to know the concentration of a solution, maybe an acid. And therefore what we can do is we can titrate it against a known volume of a known concentration of alkali. And from the volume that we need, we can calculate the concentration of that solution. We use single indicators rather than mixed indicators like universal indicator so that they have a single colour change at neutralisation. Some examples of these single indicators are screen methyl orange which is red in acid and yellow in alkali or more familiar ones which are on the syllabus litmus which is red in acid and blue in alkali and phenolphthalein which is colourless in acid and pink in alkali. When you're doing a titration, one of the solutions is in a burette. Do you have to set the initial volume to 0, 0, 0.00 on the burette? Well, no you don't. So long as you've read the initial volume accurately and the final volume at neutralization accurately, simply subtracting one from the other will tell you the volume that you've added. And why is it important to repeat titrations? Well, Particularly as the first time you do it, you may well overshoot the end point, uh, being a little heavy handed. So you might do a rough titration first to give you an idea of what volume you need to add, and then subsequently do two or three um, which have got you a consistent volume, and we call these consistent titers. They should be within either about 0.2 cubic centimetres or even at A level 0.1 cubic centimetres and you reject those which have got obvious errors. In order to do those calculations of concentration of one of the solutions we use these very familiar now uh, equations for example the number of moles equals the concentration times the volume where we're measuring the concentration in moles per cubic decimeter and the volume in cubic decimeters. That means that if your titration volume is in cubic centimeters, you will need to do some conversion. The equipment you'd need for an acid-base titration is on the left. Note the name of the burette and of the conical flask. And the solutions would be hydrochloric acid, or sodium hydroxide or indeed any other common acid and alkali and an indicator such as phenolphthalein. Assuming that you did start each of your titrations at 0, 0.00 you'd find the final volume of the acid and therefore the volume of the acid added and you would check to see which two or three of those were consistent titers and work out a mean or average of those. You'd fill the burette with, for example, 0 0.1 mole per cubic decimeter uh, hydrochloric acid and run it to the zero mark. You'd use a pipette and filler or alternatively a measuring cylinder, although this wouldn't be as accurate, to accurately measure 25 cubic centimeters of the sodium hydroxide into the flask. It's the sodium hydroxide that we don't know the concentration of, that's what we're trying to find out. Put it on a white tile so you can see the colour change uh, and adding a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator will make it go pink because that's the colour for alkali. You'd read off the initial volume of the hydrochloric acid and then add it gradually, swirling the flask as you go to mix it up until the indicator just turns colourless, that's called the end point. 
uh, you'd read off the final volume of the hydrochloric acid added and calculate the volume added and then wash out the flask thoroughly and rinse it with distilled water and then uh, repeat it having refilled the burette uh, as required and you'd repeat that until you got consistent titers within say 0.2 of a cubic centimetre of each other. Then you do the calculation to find out the concentration of this unknown sodium hydroxide sample. Well, we start off with the equation and we know that it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the hydrochloric acid and the sodium hydroxide. So if we can work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that we've needed, then we will also know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in that 25 cubic centimetre sample in the flask. Now let's say that the volume of the hydrochloric acid added, in other words our mean titer or titration value, was 24.2 cubic centimetres. We need to convert that into cubic decimetres by dividing by a thousand, so that gives us a volume in cubic decimetres of 0 0.0242 cubic decimetres. Next we use that equation, that the amount in moles or the number of moles equals the concentration in moles per cubic decimeter times the volume. Now we know that the concentration of the acid is 0 0.1 mole per cubic decimeter and we now know that the volume that we've used is 0 0.0242 cubic decimeters. So the amount in moles is 0 0.1 times 0 0.0242 which gives us 0 0.00242 moles of hydrochloric acid. Now, as said before, that's also the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which were in that 25 cubic centimetre sample, is also 0 0.00242 moles. Last stage of the calculation, then, will be, again, using that important formula but rearranging it this time because the thing that we don't know is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide but we do know the number of moles and we know the volume in cubic centimetres, it's 25 cubic centimetres. So our number of moles is 0 0.00242 moles and our volume, well it's 25 cubic centimetres which we must convert into cubic decimetres so we divide it by a thousand and get 0 0.025 cubic decimetres. Now, because our concentration is our number of moles divided by our volume, we do that calculation and we work out that the concentration of our sodium hydroxide solution is 0 0.0968 moles per cubic decimeter.